having one. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'll explain in just a minute. Oh my goodness gracious. All right, so oh, messages and stuff. So welcome to our, our treasure home. I am Nancy and my sidekick is not here today. She is at her zoo day today. So she is having fun with mom and dad at the zoo. I'll be right back. Stuff we find in a pocketbook that hasn't been used for years. <laughs> okay, something, some color is better than no color. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Beverly. How y'all doing? So, I was sitting here thinking yesterday when I did this live, I was like, I'm trying to, I was calculating what my stream yard, because I get 20 hours free from stream yard. And I was like, okay, so. I do my, so that's two, four, six, that's eight hours, because I do the morning, Sunday morning, and the Sunday night, then that leaves me like 12 hours, I said, I could do a pop-up, do one of the lives during the, during the week, do one of them, at least with StreamYard, so people can come up and everything, and also, I was like, I, I don't know if you can still, um, this way, if you can still type home. Or a stuffy. Oh, I didn't try it yesterday. <laughs> oh my gosh. Let's see. If it will still work. If it would type, if it will drop the link, you know, just something to try. Oh, it does. How about that? So, y'all drop y'all's links. Type home or stuffy. Sorry, I, my lips are dry, and then I gotta have some kind of color. I can't look too bad. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's see here. I give it a few more minutes, and I'll tell you about our morning. Yeah, it's not it. Hmm. Yeah. I might call the city just to see. But then, you know, you don't like the boat type thing. So, I'm like, okay, dokie. Well, but I want to, it's information I need to know about what time people can start working, construction workers can start working. You know, so today I am, I've got my fruit over there in the sink. I'll bring it over in just a minute. I'm going to chop up an onion and cook up. These need to be cooked up. <laughs> kind of like a rough chop. Um, yeah. Hi, Wild, wild Home. Here, y'all. So, it was like one of those mornings you think somebody's coming through your door and you're ready to uh, defend yourself. So, yeah, some of y'all know the problems we're having with this. We rent a townhouse, and it's an apartment, townhouse, community, however you want to say it. So, I mean, it's in a decent area. It's nice. They've just, they've been like this ever since we've lived in here, you know. Ooh. Say one thing, do another. So, Monday we got a letter in the mail, and I was like, 
I don't know what again. So it was just that the um, late fees were going up. But that came from the home office. So yesterday, we were downstairs, we are doing stuff and everything. And right before the live, Anastasia goes, now this was in the door. It's the same letter, but from the rental office. And I'm like, that home office that has no idea what this girl over here is doing. None whatsoever. Not at all. And we were, my son and daughter-in-law, we talked about that last night. He has no idea what this girl is doing over here. So, this morning at 6.15, I thought our neighbors was coming through the wall. Yeah. So, I'm like, what in the world is that noise? So, I get up. Well, I, I okay. First, I really thought my son, the toilet was stopped up. And then my, and my son was, um, was, you know, using a plunger. And I think, that's not the bathroom. The dentist said, I like, what the heck? Are the neighbors coming through the wall? So I jumped up. And I stayed asleep for this whole thing. I jump up. And my son and I meet each other in the hallway. He's ready. Because, you know, we have stuff to protect ourselves. And... He's ready, and I'm ready, and I'm just like, I looked at him like, what in the world is that noise? They looked out their window, and um, it was ready first. No 24-hour notice, no nothing about reapers coming Wednesday morning, and what time they would be here, but they're going to be taking the shingles off the roof and replacing them. So we woke up at 6.15 this morning to banging and carrying on, on the roof. And I'm talking, it sounded like they were slowing the roof off at one time. And I'm just like, you have got to be kidding me. I almost, I didn't say anything. My son didn't say anything. He was like, I go up to the roof and knock them off. I'm just like, you are kidding me. Yeah. So I took a, a the 30, 36 second short. And I posted it on YouTube. I'm like, yes, I am. This girl, people are going to start knowing how this girl is because this is ridiculous. And I know Laura says, pray for your enemies. Well, I'm praying for her. She be me. <laughs> I'm just like, this is ridiculous. I mean, she makes. All right. Next building over, had kids and in the people before now. Had kids rode their bikes in the parking lot and everything else. They never got a notice. So you watched. I watched. This is when I could go outside. They never got a notice about riding the bikes. Who gets a notice they couldn't ride the bikes in the parking lot? We did. The uh, kids in the next building, um, every 4th of July, that for like two years, they would take bottle rockets and shoot it towards the building. Did everybody get anything done to them? Nope. I saw I stopped saying anything. And we just kept to ourselves. I'm like, we don't do anything. They go, my Anastasia's parents go to work, come home. We stay inside. Cooks on the grill. We used to go out in the front and let her play and everything. And then we have a little hill that she can play. But since my hip goes out, it's like we, Anastasia and I have been outside for a year. And even if we did go outside... No, we would walk, and we didn't bother anybody. You know, we said hello to neighbors and everything, but no, no. I'm just like, I am so done with living in apartments and neighbors and rental people and everything. I was like, Lord, please, we want a house now. <laughs> I want to have a house. Okay, Rebecca. Oh, you're getting your hair done. You got to post a picture in your community tab so we can see what it looks like. <laughs> Maybe was in the first. Woo, I can hear people now. What's going on there? <laughs> so, I got an onion going. And let me get. So, yeah, they think I'm finished on our side. So apparently they're going to the next side and start. And I'm just like, 
No, I don't care who you are. Whatever. Six o'clock in the morning is way too early. So my theory is she probably told him nobody's home to go ahead and start at six o'clock in the morning. Yeah, she ain't no nothing. So, so yeah, I am a little bit irritated with that. But that's all right. We're going to keep on moving on. But today is definitely a coffee day. Oh, my goodness. So, since Anastasia did not eat her ashes yesterday, I'm going to eat them. I'm going to have a cucumber to go with it. And I have my um, homemade sauerkraut done. So, hey, Shirley, how you doing? So, um, I, this is ready. In fact, yeah, this is one of the best things I, I have gotten. These little things for um, making your ferments. So we can take this out. I'll probably still eat that part. Hmm, it smells kind of funny. So I got here knocking. It's the roofers. Okay. This is the first time. Yeah, I don't think this is good. I didn't leave it too long. I guess I did leave it too long, but it tastes like grass. <laughs> I had sauerkraut. I made sauerkraut before. But yeah, for some reason, this tastes like grass. I mean, like you're eating, go get the clippings that you cut out of your own yard and eat it. And that's exactly what it tastes like. Yeah, I don't think so. So, well, we'll just get more cabbage and do it again. So I've got, I'm using the big board for that. And then I'm going to put some brown turkey. Now yeah, if I use, there's two pounds in here, so I'll use a pound. We had my son made um, fried shrimp last night. We deep fried it, and so we got some rice left over. What I'm gonna try to do is use that that rice. Wow, this is let this all cook, and then I'll put that rice in there. But I was like, we keep telling them, and Stasia keeps telling them, hey, you need to make a YouTube. Yeah, I'm cooking. I don't want to be seen. She goes, you don't have to show your face. Just use your hands. <laughs> That's so funny. I was like, yeah. Many hey, people don't show who they are. They just, you know, you show their hands cooking. So, yes, today is definitely a coffee day. And I had so many plans to do today. Because I was like... Kind of by myself, and I had so many. I was like, Oh man, I can do this, this and this, you know. And I went back to bed for a little bit. I was like, Uh oh, I'm tired. I don't sleep well as enough as it is. And to be woken up at 6 15 because reapers are on the roof because they thought it was a good idea to start at 6 15, 6 o'clock this morning. So that is the noise you hear upstairs. Or here if you hear it. But I was like, I was surprised. Anastasia still, she slept through it all. I was like, oh my goodness. So I've had some salt. There's an onion that's already in there. I'm going to add some 
minced garlic. Uh, let's see, about a teaspoon. That'll work. I just dropped everything, you know. <laughs> All right. Y'all should see how I have to bend over to get stuff. It's hilarious. Because I can't bend look to my left. I have to bend to my right because my hips are locked up. And so it's like you do a slide and go down like this and get it. Especially when you're going home. Oh, should I say that out loud? Oh my goodness. Come on, I got plenty. I guess you say I'm not afraid of anything. Yeah. That's a story in half. Because they did get that way at one time where everything just. I guess I got so down that everything that all the noise or whatever just, you know, got to you and a little thing that's like, well, you know, then you got afraid of being going out and doing anything. Got over that. Then my hip. So, all right. Yeah. I'm not afraid. I, I will defend myself and Anastasia and my family to the best of my ability because I cannot run. So, being afraid, not afraid of anything happening. Um, <laughs> oh, Charlie, thank you. I've got to order more stickers from Anastasia because she only has, she used all her stickers up on something else. I have no idea what she did with them. So, I'm going to, um, I got to get with Jamie and order some stickers. So I was like, you're going to mail out stickers. And I was like, they don't have his mind. And I'm like, very much yours too. <laughs> you're going to get them as soon as I can get some from Jamie. <laughs> so, my fear was not being able to get up quick enough to help Anastasia or something would happen outside. I got over that quickly. I was like, I'm going to just stay inside. And I'm just like, you know what? As we're down here. If something happens, she can get upstairs faster than I can. And she has a safe place that she can get to. I've got plenty of stuff. I don't need a G-U-N to sit here and um, protect myself. You think of what you have in your kitchen or around. I've got my cane. I could take that cane. And I used to throw a baton when I was growing up um, in middle school and everything and cheer and everything. I can take my uh, cane and throw it like a baton and knock somebody. So, you know, there's many ways to defend yourself. Um, medically, um, I had a video out. <laughs> it was on the safety thing. But if you know people's pressure points, like your wrist, the eyes, you know, here in your throat, you can defend yourself very well. So. That's, you know, I was like, you know, when you're used to being able to run and do things and everything and then you can't anymore, it's like, you got to change your thinking. Okay, what can I do now? Like, I can't do this anymore. What can I do now? And I got, yeah, I'll be honest with you. I did get depressed a little bit because I was like, I can't do this and I can't go, I can't walk here. I can't go to the mall. I can't walk, do this. And then. My hands, y'all know about, um, if y'all go back and watch the Alpha Gall series, um, you know, I couldn't work with my hands. I couldn't, you know, do anything. My hands were splitting and I was just like, and that, that gets to you too when you can't work with your hands and stuff. So, slowly but surely, the devil, you may knock me down for a little bit, but the Bible says when I rise, watch out. You saw that? Yeah, Shirley. Oh, my gosh. All from a tick bite. You know, and I was like, we couldn't put two, two together until one day, like, standing in the kitchen, cooking like this. I, we had hamburger, and I was doing the rice. And I was like, Laura going, Nancy. And I'm like, is that it? He was like, and I'm literally, I could feel the Lord tapping on my shoulder going, 
there's your answer. Look. And I was like, uh, for 30 days, I stopped. I did a Daniel fast, and every time I went to go talk about doing the Daniel fast, it wouldn't come out. I was like, well, Lord, I guess it's not the time to talk about it. And now it's like, opens the door. I did a Daniel fast and had to do a cleanse and everything, and my hands started to heal. So, oh, so we Googled it and everything, and then um, I emailed Amy Fuel, and um, she's a a homesteader in Virginia, she does the um, Homesteading America conference. They do the big thing in Virginia. And she goes, yep. She goes, hi, Gary, how you doing? She goes, it's called Alpha Gall. Her husband has the same thing. It's from a tick bite. And can they cannot have your beef, your cow, your um, pig, you know, any pork products, any deer, or anything. And she goes, it. Nobody knows about that much because every connects Lyme disease with ticks and stuff, you know, with everything else. So now I'm just like, Karen just really gearing everything. You know, like Anastasia has that dairy allergy, and hers is kind of, it's still there. But if she has stuff that says maybe processed on um, machinery that does milk, eggs, and all in it, she can still have it to some extent. With Afagol, you can't have it. If it just says maybe processed on machinery that has come in contact with milk, dairy, or whatever, forget it. I cannot even have it because then my hands, I was like, and you know it because the itching starts. And it's like, what did I eat? I didn't eat anything. No, what did I come in contact with? You know, because... The itching is the what starts, and then it just keeps on going. And I'm just like, oh, my gosh. So my eating has changed a lot. So that's why I bring y'all along to show you what I eat, because there's some things I still can't eat. Carrots, once in a while. Potatoes, uh, maybe once a week. Or rice, I could have do a couple times a week. And then pasta, a good, you know, maybe once in a while. Um, that's just because of the starches. Yes, and, the, you know, your body just does things so differently. Now, I did, like I said yesterday, I did the test uh, just to see your nice shades or potatoes, eggplants, tomatoes, all kinds of peppers. So I eliminated all that because of my fibromyalgia and osteoarthritis in my left hip. And my arthritis in here, and yeah, <laughs> there is a difference. If I eat something, one of those potatoes, whatever, this thumb starts to act up, and then that gets bigger. So I was like, darn, man. <laughs> I was like, but I was like trying different things, like rutabagas, um, parsnips. They all taste like potatoes, too. So I think that was pretty cool. All right. So I got my hamburger done with my onions. There's the hamburger. We have leftover rice. So I'm just going to stick all that right in there. And Make it like a stir fry. So, I can all don't jump out of the pan. So, I do have the Dr. Bragg's liquid aminos. So, oh my goodness, my daughter in law has gotten on this kick about um, expiration dates. And I'm just like, please. It, you know, there are just some things that, you know, can stay just a little bit more than. I was like, oh my goodness. So that debate is going on in the house. So then I pulled out the, you know, the government website. You know, he even talks about, you know, it's not an exact science. You know, it's a guideline. It doesn't, not 
you know, set in stone. And then she goes, how much do we trust our government? How much is that right? I was like, oh my gosh. I'm like, people have been doing this for thousands and thousands of years. Something must be right about it. You know? So I'm going to try and find the correct. Let's see here. All righty. I don't use that one. How about this one? So, all right, we'll start with the watermelon. That would be the easiest. So while this is heating up, I mean, you can add so many vegetables to that. That's gonna, that will look good. And I know there are a lot of channels that talk about knives and everything, and I'm telling you. We used to, I went to class to do, um, it when I was doing um, armed security, and they were at, the whole thing with them was, who takes a knife to a gunfight? Well, you know, <laughs> I don't know about that anymore because, well, I said that word, to a G-U-N fight. How about that? So, ooh, did you say watermelon? That, yeah. Here we go. Mm. So I will make a um, fruit salad. So I'm gonna say, you know, I've seen many times someone have a G and they think they're gonna get it out faster than a K and I P and mm, yeah. G win did not work. Win. So it just depends. I mean, you can be the fastest drawer. And I know there's um his name is Jerry. I forgot his last name. Well, he's the fastest drawer in the world. And I'm like, yeah, you can do that on range. You can do it in real life. And anything takes practice. And I'm going to tell you right now, Anastasia does not like Nerf guns. She is not a gun girl. Give her a, and I got to say that word again, I don't care. She is a bow and arrow because of the movie. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, I'm talking, I forget. Um, Oh my goodness, I forgot the name of the movie. Now, what I like about the personal watermelon, it doesn't have that much seeds. Hi, Don, how are you? Jerry, look at, look, look, I forgot his last name. I can't even say it. Hi, Jeremy. So, hi, my family farm. So, the seeds. Do you keep the seeds? Do you eat the seeds? I was a kid growing up to use a toast. Don't need to see the grow watermelon in your tummy. <laughs> we ate the seeds just to see if they would work. <laughs> so. All right. So we're going to get the watermelon cut up. And Anastasia has one too, but I, uh, she wants to cut, help cut that up. Let me get a bowl. Yeah, without my own helper, I don't mm, be good bending over too much because it's like, and I told the doctor, it's like a broken door. You know, the hinge that 
catches and then you had to try to release it and everything. That's my hip. But yeah, yeah, we used to don't eat watermelon. It seeds it grows. Watermelon in your top and stomach. Yeah, so we ate it. <laughs> Cousins and I. It was like Okay, we're going to see how this works. Let's see if it grows a watermelon. Well, that's not being... They need to hurry up with that. Oh, let's see if I can... And doing something with shit me doing. <laughs> That's right. I had to cut some of them. Cut some of these down. All right. Oh, this is so good. All right, question. Do you put salt on your watermelon? <laughs> Oh, yeah. My daughter-in-law puts salt on her watermelon pieces. I'm like, okay. I've never done that before. Actually, it don't taste too bad either. All right. I'm going to go clean this off. Ah! Okay, watermelon juice on the floor. The only thing that bothers me is if I get my socks wet. I don't, I don't, I don't know what it is. I cannot stand wet socks. Once if my socks get wet, they have to come off. <laughs> Ashley, how you doing? All right, now a watermelon is done. Now it's time for the pineapple. Oh, I know. You need to keep the top to um. Oh, this light. Oh, did you hear that sizzle? Yeah. That's the light on the stove. So I'm going to try to make some room and I'm cooking my ninja. Because I don't want to get back to that. Stop using the stove because I ain't talking about a safety hazard. That's a safety hazard. And like I said, I had to bite my tongue. And she was talking about this being a safety hazard, that being a safety hazard. And I'm just like, what about your electrical system in this part place? It's a safety hazard. And there's some of the um, plugins in the wall that are loose. They, um, yeah, they don't work right. Nah, I was like, let's keep my mouth shut. The Lord knows. I'm, I'm, this was a test, I'm going to tell you, because we really could have said stuff and probably been kicked out, but I'm telling you. You think, you know, the devil would make, use people to say things and all kinds of stuff, and then, you know, like, ha, ha, ha. And I'm like, the Lord sees. I tell him, says it all the time. This happened and this happened. And I'm like, you know what? The Lord sees. The Lord sees who's for you and who's against you and who's seeing what. Yeah. 
Uh, and I have taught my son that too. Growing up, people have done stuff to us and and especially family. Oh, oh my goodness, I don't even get me started on that. But anyway, um I thought I'm telling Anastasia. I'm trying to fix this mic. Don't look at the situation. Acknowledge it. Acknowledge that it happened and give it to the Lord. Every time you think about it, say, Lord, this is on my mind. Give it to the Lord. And I told my son this. It may not be next week, next month, or next year. But the Lord, I have seen it over again and over. And I have to remind myself, the Lord does take care of it. You let it go. You keep going on with your life and doing what the Lord tells you to do. Oh, and the Lord will take care of it. The Lord wants you to look at him and not everything else. Honey, and see how electrical sounds like. Yeah, oh my gosh. Especially these lights in this kitchen. Now, we've had them replaced like four times. We replaced them the last time I saw because I was part of maintenance coming in here. Because one of the maintenance guys, the older guy, he's about my age, older guy. He's my age. Mel Chauvinist. I don't know what I'm talking about, and I'm stupid, is what basically he said to me one day. And I thought to myself, if you don't get out of here, I'm going to hit you. You don't talk to a tenant like that. So, but yeah, these lights, they buzz, and sometimes halfway come on, and then in like after five minutes, they come on completely. So I was like, mm. <laughs> I am grilling pineapple. And hamburgers and oh, that sounds delicious, Jeremy. So I'm just like, yeah. So that's my Bible lesson today. <laughs> just let it go. Uh, the Lord will take care of it. He always does. And if it comes back up to you in your mind, Lord, you know, hey, they did this and it hurt, and, and uh, I, I know you will take care of it. Oh, one example, I worked for a store. It was a dollar. It wasn't a Dollar Tree, but it was a dollar store. And the girl who worked there put in for the assistant manager position, but she didn't get it. I was hired instead. So she got mad. So well, the manager, as soon as I was hired, the manager went on vacation. She was supposed to train me. And everything that was supposed to, you know, what they were what was supposed to be going on and everything else. Oh, she didn't do nothing. She showed me a little bit here, a little bit here. She had me clean up everything, stock everything, which was her job to do. So when the manager got back, I went in the next day to try, you know, it was my day to work and I was trying to talk to her. And she goes, I'm like, you got I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, well, the girl's name said this, this, and this. I'm like, uh, no, that's not what happened. In fact, she wouldn't show me anything. Oh, no, no, she wouldn't act like that. I said, she wanted this position, didn't she? And the girl just stopped and didn't say anything. I said, but you know what? That's okay. I don't need this job, but you watch what the Lord does. And I walked out. Like I said, it wasn't next week, next month. A year later, that store was closed and they lost their jobs. So, I was like, and I was, I was like, that was back in 90, 90, 98, no, probably, uh, somewhere in the 90s, that happened. Because it was like, I'm going to say 95, something like that. So it's like, that's when you have those remembrance. God says, remember what I've done for you. <laughs> so, all right. I'm just... All right. Some of the ends, yeah, make sure. 
All right. We got that. We got this. And pineapple is sticky. <laughs> it makes me think of um, like apples and oranges and limes. They get all sticky. So the pineapple is done. Rinse my hands, and we're gonna make a fruit salad. And this light, kind of, I'm telling you, it done. So, I mean, everything is heated, but I'm glad I cooked the hamburger first. <laughs> all right, so I was on. All right, so let's see here. Let's do it this way. That way, I can have half and half in one bowl. And half and half in another bowl. So we're going to add some pineapple. And some watermelon. And it was so nice and warm and sunny and hot the other day. Then the rain came and now it's cooler. Well, it's sunny today, so I'm, I'm glad it's sunny because I'll oh, turn that light off. All right, so I've got some watermelon and some pineapple. We have some raisins. So I'll add a couple handfuls of raisins. Oops, sorry about that. And Miss Dear Rebecca, she is such a sweetheart. She sent me some stuff. And it has dry camp cranberries. So I'm going to use that. Find the center of the open bag. Because this chicky. Who knows what they do with stuff. Let's see if I can do this. Yeah. <laughs> That sucker is glue tight. Oh. Cut it away from yourself. So then we're going to add some dried cranberries. So a couple handfuls of that. Yeah, I know it's probably a little sugar, but oh well. I don't want this thawing over and then everything goes in the floor. I'm going to get one more thing. It's always fun to cook and everything is the cleaning up that's not fun. <laughs> I am just going to leave the peeling on. I'm not even going to peel it. Yeah, I know. The way I see it, if the pesticides are on the outside, it's going to seep into the inside too. So. Now, I, um, I remember having, uh, uh, had an apple tree. One of my aunts had an apple tree. Man, those are the best tasting things. You just go, go pick the apple off the tree and eat it. 
We had the best time. That's right. God does not sleep. He neither sleeps or slumbers. Who takes care of Israel? As a God that never sleeps or slumbers will take care of us. Yeah, and then you know we get to we do get to the point sometimes we forget what God's done for us, and then you know it's good to remember, talk about those things. The saint says he he's a thief. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And one way he starts with that is your mind. If he can get you to forget, that's half the battle. So we got our oh my goodness, it's supposed to be like a stir fry. It's more like a almost like a mush. <laughs> my rice and hamburger and onion. Done. We've got our fruit salad. So I just, I know I don't have anything to put in to like really make it come together except just to stir it up. And I'm going to plate this up. So we have. All kinds of goodies today. We got watermelon and pineapple, apple, dried cranberries and raisins. Um, I know there is a, like a dressing type thing you could put. I don't. I have to look that up because I don't remember how to do it offhand. And there we go. Here is lunch today. We have our fruit salad and we have our stir fry. And with that, you can add anything to it. Woo! There we go. You can add anything to that stir fry. I used the, you know, the bok choy that I had yesterday. You could use that. You could put you know, celery if you have, um, oh my goodness, carrots or peas. We put corn in it one time. I'll see what else. Oh, uh, it's called jicama, but it starts with a J. That's a Japanese type um, root vegetable. That's like, oh my goodness. I need to order two apple trees. Oh yeah. Oh, plum tree. I love plums and everything. And I've got, um, I've got dates in the refrigerator and I've got some plums and everything. So it's like here I love dates. I've always loved eating dates. But the plums it makes me think of my grandparents. They used to eat plums to help go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, prune juice. Prunes. Prunes. That plum well plums turn into prunes. Prunes. <laughs> So prune juice and everything. We used to laugh because like we hope we never get to that point and here I am eating prunes. <laughs> Like, oh my gosh, that's so funny. Oh yeah, oh yeah, plum jelly, that's good. Especially when you make your own and everything, because you know Asian sauces uses that plum jelly to make their sauces and everything. And that's good too. So since this is already cooled off because of that light, I'm going to show y'all a quick. There we go. That's so close. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's so good. Because I use the amino acids instead of soy sauce. Tastes just like soy sauce. So, and um, hi, M and T cooking, living and cooking. How y'all doing today? So, yeah, and then um, talking about my stockpile, it's out of sight, out of mind type deal. So, I wait, honestly, to be honest with you, they don't have to grocery ship, shop for me for six months because I've got enough to, I mean, it lasts me a year at least. Because, like, you know, I 
the I, the uh, turkey burger comes in a two pound package. And when they get it at Sam's, they buy it's two for seventeen, so seven dollars each. Right. It's been that way. So that's a pound, and y'all saw this is what a pound does for ground turkey for me. So I'm like, like that's like almost three meals for me because I will eat this and I'm going to have that for supper maybe and then add like other vegetables. Like I go get a can of peas or something or another. Throw that in there and add other stuff to it. So and then I got this watermelon and the pineapple. So I'm like I, I'm good. If I, I've got enough of canned um vegetables I did myself that I'm good to go with because I love collard greens and kale and spinach and stuff and but I'm this now that school is over with hallelujah oh my gosh technically it's over with she has all her classes done her school projects are done so um just little things tomorrow and that'd be all done and I'm just like hallelujah I'll just put in the hours that you still have to put in that do some. She likes this little thing called number blocks on um, YouTube. And I'll put the link in my community tab. You talk about some cute little things to help kids learn how to count and everything. She loves it. And she will watch that thing. She's got some favorite ones, but they'll, you know, it's really cool how they show you're adding and subtracting. They got multiplication and everything. So, hey, if that helps her learn, I'm all for it. Well, like, th now is the time I really need to go through stuff, um, like my craft stuff. Now, one some stuff I've already promised to send to somebody, but I have other craft stuff I'm, I'm just not doing. And I'm like, I don't want to do it. I'm, I kind of want to do it, but I'm not really wanting to do it. There's other things I want to do. I want to do my sewing and my crochet and I want to do my candles. So I go, I'm going to take a week to go through all that and, you know, stuff downstairs, like old paperwork. That's from 2013 or older. But I really need to keep it, you know, back in the day when you filed your taxes and it was paper form and you kept it for 10 years because you just never knew do I really need to keep those? I don't know. We shall see. But, the, you know, just, I don't know. When you feel like the Lord is telling you, hi, Hoogie Homestead, telling you to go through stuff, to clean out, to get organized. Like, you get ready to move or something. You just do it. I, I, I was talking to... Jamie the other day, and I was like, you know, when the Lord sits there and tells you to do something, don't make excuses, just do it. <laughs> I'm like, I should know that lesson. I, I know that lesson. I, I just need to do it. So, but like with the cookbooks, I don't need to order any more cookbooks, though I, I see some more that I like, but I don't need to order any more because I want to make my in the process of making my own cookbook. And I've said that for years now. And it's like the Lord goes, now, just do it. So now it's time to get what I need to do to get um, my table cleared up because I've got my sewing machine. I already know how to crochet, just learn different stitches and everything. But we want to learn to sew and my candles and then my cookbook. And I'm like, that's what I need to focus on in the channel. So that's like I talked about doing lives during the day because school is over with now and I could do a lunch live and show y'all what we cook while we're cooking lunch for us during school and, and other times and I have I like no or not today I don't feel like it and he's like you hear this big old somebody in your ear saying do it <laughs> so I was like okay Lord I'll do it so a couple of Bible lessons today one, when someone does something to you or says something to you, be like a duck. Let it roll off your back and let it go. I know it's hard. I, I, I'm, I'm preaching to myself. And then when it comes up in your mind, Lord, I still struggle with this, but I'm giving it to you. And believe me, he sees. And it will come back to them. 
Second of all, when God says, tell you to do something, do it. Don't try to come up with excuses. Don't try to say, I don't have time. I don't have the money. And God owns everything. He made everything. He can part that Red Sea for the Israelites to cross over on dry land. He's going to do it for you and for me. And that's something that we can remember and tell ourselves every single day. You know, because... Yeah, I have to preach to myself. <laughs> David did. David said he encouraged himself in the Lord. So so can we. You know, that was one thing that was um Elevation Church. Not Mother's Day, um, because Holly um did a sermon, but the Sunday before, Pastor Stephen Furtick, he sat there talk about David and um when David was fleeing from Saul and you know. We think we're not supposed to go crazy or anything, but David had to go into the uh, land of Gath to the king of Gath. And what happened? He acted like he was crazy. And we forget that too. Hi, Frank. How you doing? And we forget that. David acted crazy, but in the midst of it, he was singing and praising the Lord. You know, so... Yeah, you know, when we even feel like we're losing our mind, just sing and praise the Lord, you know. And that's one thing I love, you know, about learning about the Old Testament and the New Testament, you know. The New Testament reflects the Old Testament. They were just like you and me, you know. Elijah, he got depressed when Jezebel said he was, she was going to kill him after he just won and over Baal and all that. You know, all of a sudden, now he's running for his life. So, yeah, we we have those times, too, and everything. Oh, Frank, it's okay. We know life happens. So, here we go. All right, we'll do the pineapple. I'll get some raisins and some cranberries. There we go. I oh, have yeah. apple and a watermelon and a raisin. Oh. You know it's summertime. Mm. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, that's definitely a winner. I know there was a moment, it's like a white sauce, it's a thin. I don't remember how to make it. I know my um my mom never did. My my mom's sister did, and then some of my dad's sisters did. And they say they made mayonnaise. I don't think so. <laughs> so and they would put over it and everything. I don't know, that's good just like it is. So the question is, do you put salt on your watermelon? Good thing I just got down eating my lunch, Nancy. <laughs> I was telling everybody yesterday, there were six of us growing up. And my mom and dad and I had told two older sisters and an older brother. If that's who my family, well, according to um, and, um, 23 and me, I'm not related to them at all, which I knew, but that's the female group. But So... We're used to making stuff, huge meals for big families because that's where we grew up. And one of my dad's brothers, they had seven kids, six boys and one girl. My dad's parents, you know, my dad's parents, they had 16 children. So we come from a huge family. So, you know, we get used to making big meals. And then it was not only but four of us now. <laughs> It's like, oh my goodness. I was like, do you really eat that much growing up? Apparently we did. Oh, you put salt on your ramen too. Yeah, see, my daughter-in-law does. And we used to think she was like, like, what? That doesn't make sense. But actually it tastes pretty good. You know. And I was like, yep. You know, people eat. Things just differently than everybody else. Just because one person eats it with salt and one other person doesn't. That's what we're talking about opinions um, that we're teaching in the school. And I'm like, 
And Stacia, let me give you one piece of advice. Just because someone has a different opinion of you doesn't mean they're wrong and you're right or you're wrong and they're right. And my mom used to do that all the time. Well, because you don't agree with me, I'm always wrong. And it's like, just because I have a different opinion, you doesn't mean you're wrong. <laughs> I'm just like, oh my goodness. So it's like salt with karma. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. I got to do that. I have to show y'all how to make homemade caramel. All right. So is it caramel or caramel? Because here's the key. That's my one. Here's the key. Mount Carmel in the Bible is C-A-R-M-E-L. Carmel. Caramel. C-A-R-A-M-E-L. Caramel. So there's a difference. <laughs> it's like Anastasia pointed that out to me. I was like, oh, we need to tell people. I, I didn't tell y'all that. But anyway, but the she pointed that out. She goes, that's caramel. And this is caramel. I'm like, yeah, there you go. But some people don't say it that way. It's so funny. <laughs> it's like, she is hilarious. I'm glad they got to go out today. And they ain't went to Columbus Zoo. So that place is huge. So uh, the water side is not open. Hi, Donnie. How you doing? Enjoy. And, um, oh, my goodness. They were talking about the zoo. I was talking about the water side. They have a water side, and then they have the zoo side. I was like, the water side's not open. I was like, oh, I'm so glad, but because it's kind of cool out there today. But that's all right. She's gonna have fun. She might get to ride a camel again. And I'm just like, oh my goodness, if you ride a camel, she goes, yeah, I got to ride a camel the last time we went. And I was like, good for you. I am not walking it, and I don't have a scooter. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Hi, Randy. How you doing? So I was just like, hmm. Yeah. I just, I'm not, just like today, I went to go step to go to the closet to get something out of the closet, and I just stopped, and my hip was like, I go... See, it's not going to do it, but if I could, if I step, if I step the wrong way, the step will just go, and I go down like this, and I'm just like, okay, what do I need to grab so I don't fall on the floor? You know, you try like, you like on a balance beam, you balance yourself out <laughs> so you don't fall. And I was like, my son goes, you got the steps. I was like, if you watch, I don't need this leg at all. And in the mornings when I get up, I can tell you, it's like dragging your leg. So it's like this leg got hold on to this leg can go out. I don't know if y'all can see. This leg can go out. So I got hold on to this leg. You forget I get that far and that's it. And so we're working on that one a lot of times. So uh, next Friday. Yeah. Next Friday, they go for the EEG for my head to see what's going on. My son say nothing going on up there. <laughs> like, like what thinks like he gets mom. I don't mean it that way. <laughs> he goes, brain ain't functioning anymore like it used to. <laughs> so I was like, all right. And then the end of June, I'll go for um, the electrical philosophy test. It's when they put the catheter up your leg and all they go to see what the electrical system in your heart is doing. So, I'm a lot of time. But you know what? I am most, most thankful that God wakes me up every morning because I, I I had thought about this the other day and I don't know why I think about that. But, the, you know, Anastasia and I are here by ourselves. because They leave to go to work early and everything. And that's one thing I do not ever want to happen is she wake up and I have passed away. And I'm like, no, Lord, that cannot happen anytime soon. You know, so thank you for waking me up. I wake up, but I'm up all night long, twisting and turning because, you know, aches and pains and stuff. But when I wake up in the morning, I'm like, thank you, Lord. I know you woke me up. I can lay here 
do my devotions, say my prayer and everything. Then I wake in and stage up and we get up and do our day and every and all. So yeah, I've already died once. I don't I'm not ready anytime soon to go again. <laughs> and I've got a video on that. Um not the scary things that happen to me, things that things that I should have that happened that I should not be here or something like that. And all so it's hard to get it through the screen. I know. Here, let me try again. That don't work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. But, you know, so just a little bit here and there, stuff that goes on, stuff that's happened and everything. I do have videos about it. Um, you know, I have to sit there and re get them back up or oh, I mean they're there but you know try to post them in the community tab so y'all can see them but the scary things that happened to me those actually really did happen and um the one thing that happened with the car when we were moving from Virginia to Missouri in the mountains between and you know, mountains where the mountains Virginia and North Carolina and all that right there, me. Mm -mm. This chicky will not go through those back roads ever again. I don't know what jumped at my car. But I'm telling you, all I saw, I saw it when I was coming around the corner. And it was out of my left eye, peripheral vision. I saw this thing standing there. All you saw was the eyes. And I'm like, please don't jump out. Please don't jump out. It jumped out. And it landed right underneath the front tire. I went on the left side. Went over it, went over it with the back tire, and tires never popped. Never saw it again. I got it with the flashlight. And we, yes, I had a weapon with me and to make sure everything was okay and everything. And I was like, they were going, get in the car, Mom, get in the car. So we got in the car, and we just happened like maybe not even a quarter of a mile up the road. There was a gas station with a street light. That was the only light they had, it was one street light. And we got out. There's no blood, no hair, no nothing on my car. Because figure a deer, you know, it won't no deer. It was something standing up. So, yes, I've had weird things happen to me. It's like, it can go away now. Stay away. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Because they're trying to figure out what's like. And my heart stops for three to four seconds and then starts back up in PVCs um, and then bricocardia, which is slow heartbeat. But they can't figure out why nobody caught it till now. I don't know. I've been telling them doctors all this time stuff that goes on. I got every kind of excuse in the book. So, yeah. And then the doctor I saw last Friday about neuroscience he's like something's going on we're gonna figure out what it is he was actually the same doctor that did the test on my carpet tunnel and he was like oh yeah we're gonna figure out what's going on because we're gonna help you out i was like thank you Lord. that's that does the prince talks about the right time and the right place and i i honestly believe that after all these years the right time right place the right doctors because it's been a long time Bigfoot. Oh, it could have been Bigfoot. I've heard Bigfoot. Uh, that's something that's in that video, too. In the mountains, I was 18 years old. We were on a trip with our church um, youth group um, outing and everything. We were in the mountains of Virginia and everything else. And we went uh, sightseeing and everything. And we got out. And it's so funny because we just I had just watched an uh, episode of MacGyver that they had filmed in Virginia. And they had the Bigfoot sound, and he, you know, he just kind of looked around like, what in the world? So we're, we were on the same place, but we were up in the Blue Ridge Mountains, you know, riding the mountains, and then we got out, you know, take a sightseeing and everything else, and we heard the sound. I'm like, I know what that sound is. And they looked at me like, things it was. I said, that's Bigfoot. And they go, no, it's not. I said, well, well, so is it. <laughs> so I have heard I've had heard it. I haven't seen it, but I've heard it. So, but I was like, oh my goodness. 
Yeah. So, a recap today. If y'all have not seen the short I put up at 6.15 this morning, we were awake. I was awoke up, waking up, woke up, because I thought my son was in the bathroom. What's the plunger? I'm like, that's not the plunger. Now, I'm like, what the hell does that sound? I was going to say heck. <laughs> That was like, that was not what we were thinking. Um, I was like, what in the world? The neighbor's coming through the wall. I got up, and by the time I got to my bedroom door, and my son got to his bedroom door, we were both in the hallway at the same time. And I'm like, what is that? It was roofers on our roof, taking the, the uh, roofing tiles off at 6 o'clock this morning. I, I, apparently we were asleep at least through 15 minutes of it when they started. And he goes, then he looked down, he goes, it's roofers. I'm like, you are kidding me. And my daughter-in-law, she goes, yeah, no 24-hour notes, no nothing. I said, and see, that's what I'm talking about. That bit, that home office does not know what this girl in the rental office is doing. So, at 6.15, we were waking up. So, I don't know if y'all can still hear them. This is this is the end of it, but the, yeah, I got two shorts, so I'm going to post the other one, too, but I'm just like, you know, that's ridiculous. It's like 6.15 a.m. in the morning, and they're up on the roof tearing all this stuff off, and it sounds like they're coming through the roof, and I'm telling you, at one point, it sounds like they're sawing through the roof, so I was like, oh, my goodness, so they got up at 7.30, except we'll try to go back to sleep. Bigfoot is a big deal in the Smoky Mountains. You got that right, Joy. <laughs> That's her. I know. I know it's not. I'm going to look into that, though, and see if, you know, with this, if this was against code or something other. Because I was like, That's that's totally wrong. So, um, they got up and, and everything. They left about 9, 9.30. <laughs> And then she goes, what's Nana going to do? Oh, my son goes, she's going back to bed. <laughs> I tried. I did go like back down. I probably slept for like me 30, 40 minutes. And then I got back up and I was like, I got stuff to do. You know, clothes and trying to get through some stuff. And I was like, I get uh, ready for it. And I did get to get into some people's lives. Um, Susan, the hill, hillbilly chicken. And then um, Six Acres Farm, Linda. So, you know, I got up and started doing stuff and everything. I was like, this body is going, you're not doing anything. I'm like, yes, I got to do it. I got to do it. Because just like, get up and get it done. So, all right. See you later, Frank. All right. So, but yeah, this is, this is one of those days. It's definitely a coffee day. You know, this is cold. <laughs> That's okay. I don't like cold coffee, but if I had to have some coffee, I'm going to drink it. Yeah, I didn't sweeten it. I don't care. I'm drinking black or whatever. I don't need coffee. So what I did for lunch, a uh, um, cup of onion, and I sauteed an onion, put a pound of turkey, ground turkey, in the same pan, and then cook that up, and then add the rice from last night's dinner. And so this is lunch. This is this lunch. And then I made a fruit salad with watermelon, pineapple, red, uh, raisins, and dried cranberries. Mm, I like this. It's good. Definitely good for you. Week in Indiana on a different times. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, I know. Those times change the times, and we went from Eastern Time, and then we moved to Missouri, where it was an hour. You no, know, that's an hour difference. So it took us a while, uh, a little bit, to get used to that time. What's really different is when you fly from Virginia and you go to California, and there's a like three hour time difference. <laughs> and some of you, uh, here we go. There you go. Oh my goodness. So yeah, that's um just you know, go back to straightening up, uh going through stuff. Um 
trying to save some money. So one thing I talked about was um, not buying anything else for a while. I've got enough cookbooks. I want to start going through the cookbooks thing and cooking those up for everybody. And then, um, you know, try to save money. Yeah, you know. But one thing about I found about um, what I can do is I can save money even though because there's different forms of social security disability and without saying too much if you look into it and you can call I call three times to verify and there's stuff I can have because of permanent disability so I was like cool I'm good with that but yeah I have enough left over each month that if I need to buy something, I could. I mean, but I don't go. I don't go to work anymore. Well, this is my work. How about that? This is my work. Um, no way, don't go nowhere, or you know. So I get things that I haven't had in a long time, or I wish I had. So that works out. A short song for my friends today named seeing yesterday was a monkey short. Oh, yeah, I saw that. That was so cool. I love that. That was hilarious. I got to laugh and you made me laugh. Joy, that was so precious and everything. When he called you a monkey. <laughs> Daddy called you a monkey. Um, I used to, uh, when I was in a stage of saying we had a, uh, a friend come over and I would something fall on the floor, pick it up with my feet and, and everything else. So she goes, Nancy's like a monkey. She's using her feet. <laughs> so I was just like, it was just easier to pick it up with your foot and, hand, you know, and everything else. You know, I have to do it that way. And all. Uh, I was like, oh my goodness. All right. So tomorrow. Tomorrow is a I'm not going to do a live tomorrow. During lunch, I'll try to do a video and post a video. But um, we're going to finish up, like I said, it's not much schoolwork. We're basically done. It's just the last little bit of, like, science and history. And uh, so we're going to get all that done tomorrow because then that way we're completely done with school. Yep. Oh, monkey. The Anastasia is actually, her little nickname was Monkey. When she was born, everybody's a little monkey. I call her my baby girl. And she's just always been my baby girl. I didn't have a girl. I had two sons. I didn't have a girl. So I have a granddaughter. So I was like, yeah. <laughs> and yes, I spoil her as much as I possibly can. I may not buy, be able to buy her things, but I spoil her with love. Sounds delicious. I love having lunch with you today. Oh, thank you so much, Dawn. I appreciate that. So, with that, everybody, thank you for coming by. I want to say a prayer before we leave. And I'm telling you, if I could ship this all to y'all, I would. You know, maybe one day I'll have a restaurant and y'all can come visit. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> so, thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for the blessings of health, safety, provision, protection that you give to all of us. Thank you for everybody that come to the live and send a chat. And thank you for those who watch the replay. We thank you for the wonderful food that you've given to us and our supplies that we need every single day. That you are our supporter, our father, that protects us and guides us and knows everything that happens to the Lord. And that we can leave it all at your feet and show the joy of the Lord and through everything that we go through, the good and the bad, and that we know that all things work for good. And you work it out for our good in one way, shape, or form. We may not know, but we just keep our eyes to you in everything. I thank you for this day and that you gave us another day to sing and praise your name and bless those throughout this week, dear Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. So I was like, yeah, yeah, there's some Bible lessons throughout this the whole time. <laughs> what is this? I just combined everything. <laughs> So y'all have a wonderful day. God bless. Stay safe. We love you. Um, enjoy the good food, the good cooking, even though y'all can't taste it. Like I said, 
that's one thing I'm working on. I want to work on my cookbook, on my candles, my sewing, my crochet. And I know one day I'm going to have a restaurant. Like, all y'all can come visit. So y'all have a wonderful Hey, Linda, how you doing? Y'all have a wonderful day. Um, yeah, we never know. I know tomorrow we're not doing a live. I'm not going to do one Friday because her parents are off and and station and everything. I'll probably be doing some videos, but I have to do it through the computer because, you know, that, that another ST, the SD card bit the dust. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. Must be a red cook. Oh, yeah, that'd be so cool. That's my alarm. Oh, oh it's okay. Still sitting at the doctor's appointment. Oh, I understand that. Yeah, don't plan for anything. We go to the doctor's. It's just plan to be there all day. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, Y'all have a wonderful and blessed day. And I'll see you next time on Our Treasure Home. She <laughs> she say, like, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. The video is over. <laughs> I, gotta, I can't stand as fast as she does. <laughs> Y'all have a great day. Thank you.